a little YouTube, Zoom to YouTube streaming glitch. How's that? Okay, we are live on YouTube. Okay, and let's share the screen. Can you guys hear me okay? Testing one, two, three. Hello? Can you hear you? Very good. How are you guys doing today? Good, thank you. Great. Hey, I'm Bill Gross. I am a real estate broker in Los Angeles, California. I am the LAProbateExpert.com, and we do this weekly call, uh, Probate Weekly, www.probateweekly. We also stream it live on YouTube and record it, and uh, have, we're in the process of building a national group of people who are looking to get started in probate real estate as salespeople or in it currently and sharing best practices, best ideas, and we want to do the uh, so we can work together and improve our businesses. Um, so just to, uh, and I'm sorry, go back again. And this is uh, topic number 11, networking. So my thesis is there's 11 ways to sell probate. Most companies that sell coaching sell one of two ways to, to, uh, to get business. They'll teach you, let's say the data and tell you to cold call petitioners, estates that are looking to sell property or cold call attorneys. Uh, both those can be done, both those have to be done, but they're both very competitive niches. Not only that, I believe that if you try attacking the enemy from two or three angles or the, 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 the goal from two or three angles, you're more likely to be successful if your methods are synergistic. And so that's why real estate agents who geographically farm should also call expires and for sale by owners in their area. So in probate, rather than just one methodology, I teach that you should have two or three. And, we, and I'm actually sharing with you, there's 11 different ways. We've been doing one way a week, and then we'll repeat that weekly. So we'll start at the beginning of the call each week with some content based on those 11 ways. And this week is number 11, networking. Now, each of these classes could be an hour deep. My goal in this call is just to introduce the topic about 10, 15 minutes, make it interactive. And then I go on and do some problem solving and meet people and see what people are doing. Anytime you're interested, ask a question. You can raise your hand. You can put it in the chat box. Or really, unmute yourself and jump in unless you're offensive. Uh, I meant this to be interactive. I really believe we need more interaction as humans, interaction as salespeople and real estate. So feel free to jump in anytime. I want this to be interactive, okay? We good? Questions? Ready for this? Let's do this. Let's get busy. Number 11, networking. There's 11 ways you can get probate, you can get sales and probate real estate. And one of them, number 11 of my 11, is networking. Now, I'll say it's not a quick fix. You got to work hard. You got to be consistent. You have to follow up. You need to learn and improve. You cannot avoid those four fundamentals. Um, who am I? I've been in real estate since 1986. I've been in mortgages and real estate. I've been in sales management, executive and owner. I've been full-time lead generating a probate for two and a half years. I've taken a bunch of certifications. I don't know if I've taken them all. I've taken a bunch of them. Uh, five of them I can count. I've done in-depth research. I've, I've watched YouTube videos. I've read books, articles. I had the probate code of California. I'm in the process of finishing reading that up. And I used to go to the courthouse every single day. Now I go about once a week for business. But back pre-COVID, I'd go every single day. And I can say that as a result of that in the last two years, I've seen more sales of real estate in LA County courthouse and probate than any judge, attorney, or individual agent. I also track the entire court's activity daily. So that's my background. That's my area of expertise, my credentials. So again, before we start the fundamentals, mindset before money, the shortcut of real estate is the hard work. And there's a great story you might want to... Uh, um, Search this on YouTube, the Zig Ziglar water pump story. But basically, it just means that if you don't work consistently and you stop, you got to start all over again. There's only two things that generate business, time and or money. Most real estate people in the building business don't have enough money. We also in a business is very capital intensive because you can take money and buy real estate with it. So we have to find ways to make, to make money without spending money. So there's nothing today that I'm going to tell you that really costs anything more than you're doing already. 
I'm really a big believer in getting more out of what you have, squeezing more out of the oranges or lemons you already have in your, in your uh, database. Real estate, real estate is a contact sport or contact business. The more people you talk to, the more money you make. Simple mathematic proposition. So if you learn about probate, talk to more people about it, you're gonna end up making more money. And it's a numbers game. It's just a numbers game. And then lastly, your come from. <clears throat> how can you help people? Real estate agents, there's, there's other companies that teach kind of how you can take advantage of the situation. You list it, double lend it, then you're the investor, you flip it, you're the contractor, you do all those things, you make all the money. Mine is how do I can I help you? I literally was on the phone 45 minutes ago with a, on a deal with a, uh, it wasn't an attorney, it was a cr judgment creditor, client of an attorney. And we put a deal together and they adjust the deal by about $2,500. He said to me, well, you know, do we have to adjust the sales price? And I said, I'll just take that on my commission. And he said to me, well, why are you doing that? You know, I, I, you're working hard, you're worth a lot. I said, no, I got it. I've padded the deal. I'll make sure you net what I told you we met, but I'm trying to move quickly to move through it. And as I said to him, and this is how I really believe, my goal is to make you happy with my service and do a bunch of deals with you, not just one. So I focus on helping people, but I tell you, I'm making a lot of money. I'm making more money than I ever made as a real estate salesperson. So be the solution to all things real estate. Title's the problem, probate's the solution. When you talk to people, keep that in mind. When people have a, a problem, that should be a clue. That should tell you somebody needs you. Simple uh, samples are grandma left me the property. I don't know what to do with it. It's not my name. My siblings are fighting over property. The mom and dad left us. Property is supposed to be to trust, but it's not. And we started probate and got stuck. The solutions look like help them through probate, maybe lend them money to pay for an attorney or find somebody who can. Solutions look like getting them an attorney to help them with litigation. Solution could look like getting an attorney and put it back in trust. Or a solution could be help them start and finish the, the probate process. These are all deep problems I can go into in detail. But I just want you to get the idea that these are deals. These are typical deals. So you can learn all those possibilities, or as you're learning, I can help you. Call me the scenario. I'm glad to help. I help agents all the time. I help investors, wholesalers. I don't do many of the, by percentage, maybe I do one in five or one in 10. Four to five times, nine out of 10 times, I'll help you solve a problem and I don't have to get involved. If you need my help, I'll tell you, I think you need my help and you can decide to use me or not. So 11 ways to get a probate, I'm sorry, 11 ways to get a sale in probate real estate. There's 11. And we're talking today about number 11, which is networking. Number one, great source, real estate investment clubs, real estate meetups, go into Eventbrite, look for meetings that are in your area, in a, a product that you're interested in. Meetups, meetup.com and eventbrite.com, great sources. They used to be live meetings only. And I used to go to live meetings. I went to a real estate investment club in Van Nuys at the Sizzler. Or as when I coach this, Casey Everhart says, Sizzler. And I met people there. And as a result of meeting people there, one customer in the first six months, I closed uh, a couple of deals, about $40,000 in revenue. Then last year, about 100000 Already this year, another $40,000 from one customer I met. And I have, and I sold another house from a customer I met at Sizzler. Now I think about it this year. So I've sold three houses so far this year from one networking event. The key, but so real estate investment clubs are a great source. Another one is business marketing, like BNI. Now I'm not saying join them. I'm saying if you're in it already, it's a great source of business. Right? And there's some strategies we're going to talk about how to turn that into business as probate. Within probate, you also have the Bar Association Affiliate Division. If you're marketing attorneys, you should join the local bar to you. I'm in LA. There's an LA bar. There's a Santa Monica bar. There's a Valley Bar Association. And they have an affiliate division for non-attorneys like me to join. Some areas it's social, luncheons, cocktail party hours. Some it's education. I like the education one in downtown LA. There's also fiduciary organizations. There's networking organizations. You know, there's an organization that met in Las Vegas last week. I didn't realize this, but four people out of my 24-person team 
we're at that same meeting in Las Vegas. I looked at that and said, wow, this group has four of my team members in it. I didn't know any of them knew each other. I better find out who the other people are and market to them, right? So business marketing, if you're a probate expert, is a great opportunity. But here's the key. You got to focus in an area. And I'm not saying necessarily probate, but whatever it is you do, focus. The mistake we make is we think if we tell people that we do everything, we'll fool them into thinking we know anything. Go on to almost any realtor's LinkedIn profile and they'll say, I'm an expert in first time home buyers, trade up home buyers, luxury homes, uh, multifamily, industrial, commercial, bridges, farms, ranches. Crazy, right? You guys have seen that. But, the, but my coach, Don Hobbs, who's my sponsor at EXP, he's also the president of um, Success Magazine, taught me that, that the brand is you and you got to be focused in on one particular thing. So when people think of you, they think of one particular thing. But they'll give you business outside that. Meaning for me, I tell everybody I'm the LA probate expert. But all the time I get people say to me, well, I have a house to sell. It's not a probate. Can you sell it? Well, of course. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Right? But I focus all my marketing on being the probate expert. Everything I do is related to that. Every decision I make, every dollar I spend is focused on that. What's your focus? Right? If you're a flipper, a wholesaler, what's your focus? One of my very good friends, I'd love to get on this call, um, long time successful investor flipper in the Valley. He and his partner have a, a rectangle area, this side of Ventura, this side of something else between these two boulevards. That's all they do. Now, occasionally by prospecting that area, they get people who live there who own property elsewhere, but all their marketing is in that area, right? So the power of, of probate real estate or trust real estate or however you want to phrase it for your business is focusing on that area. So when you go to a network event, you focus as a probate expert. Come from giving. When you go to a networking event, this is why people don't go to them because you get hounded the whole time. Give me referrals. Here's my card. Here's my this. Here's my that. You know, I'm selling, you know, uh, whatever, makeup. I'm selling whatever product, multi-level marketing. People, give me, give me, give me. It's exhausting, isn't it? When you go to networking, you want to find, you're looking for chances to help other people. How can I help you? What are you looking for? Because then they'll remember you to give you something back. So if you're going to network in probate real estate, you want to look for people who need help, advice, good vendors, good lenders, good escrow, good title, good construction people. You want to look for ways to help other people. And another point within networking is have a value piece to drive lead generation. So if you ever watch my calls, when I get invited to another group, I spoke to um, Pacific Coast Title twice in the last two weeks. I spoke if, uh, to Paul Horn's group one time. I always say, if you want more good stuff, text to 213-460-2577. And you'll get back a list of the 11 ways to sell probate real estate. You'll get back data sources with a coupon. I'm giving value to people. If, you use, if you're buying probate data, you might as well use the one I have. I give you a discount. I don't get anything for it. You get a discount, plus you get a free book. So I offer that to people to help them as a way to get their name and phone number and email. And over time, if you have enough people in your network that you've given things to, think of them as planting seeds. If you plant enough seeds and I'm, I'll be honest with you. I've never been a farmer. Now I grew up, my backyard was avocado orchard on one side and the other side was, was oranges and uh, pomegranates and other stuff. We didn't grow it. Our, we just had a house, but our neighbors had orchards in the back. But I believe you plant those seeds, they get watered and fertilize and grow. But for sure, that's how business works. You help enough people by giving them something of value, you'll have more business than you ever dreamed of. Number six, create your own tribe with your own event. Create your own tribe with your own event. Now, I, I people on my team, I'm at EXP, and I have uh, agents that I've helped, not on my team as far as Bill Gross's brokerage, but 
my team, as far as I'm helping them build their business. And one thing I do is I help them build their own events. So I have Annabelle Pacheco has an event on Wednesdays on investing in multifamily out of state. Paul Krauss has remodeling Tuesdays. And so what I've helped them understand is the power of creating your own tribe with your own event. You become the expert. Really just by hosting this call every Thursday and a similar call on Tuesday on real estate investing and recording them and sharing them, I have literally thousands of people who think of me as a probate expert. I put the work in also, don't get me wrong, but they know who I am because of my own events. And you understand that, you know, the game is not about how many people like you or how many follow you on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube because they own those channels. You want to have the relationships with people that you know, like, and trust and that know, like, and trust you. The more people that you know, like, and trust and like, and trust you, the more you win. That's what networking is all about. Number seven, the money is in the follow-up. Too many people network, go to an event, and never meet people again. I'll share with you, when I meet somebody who I want to do business with, I put it in my database, name, address, phone number, email. If I meet them in person, I'll send them an email that day. Hey, Joe, it was great meeting you at, at the courthouse. It was great meeting you at the network event. And I'll call them the next day. If there's more business for us to do. And the phone, the phone call follow script is the three-step follow-up script I teach. Simple. Number one, thanks for your time. It was great meeting you. Pause. Let them answer you. Number two, I know we spoke about real estate, investing, whatever. Any questions come up after we spoke? And number three is the next step. I'd like to invite you to this. Let's go to lunch. Let's go to coffee. I'd like you to watch a video, whatever the next step is. But a relationship is a series of activities, not a one-time thing. The money is in the follow-up. And that leads to number eight. The goal is a relationship, not a contract, not a deal. And if you get that, when you do your networking, that the goal is to meet the most people and have the most relationships and the most productive relationships, you'll win. Most people, when they network, are just looking for a deal that day. It amazes me how many people will come to an event once. Now, if you check it out and don't like the group, okay. If you check it out and don't like the time slot or location, I get it. But don't expect business from anything, doing anything once. Not a value. Expect to have to go there and meet and become a trusted advisor to the tribe. Okay, so let's wrap up the content I have. I do have a couple. Um, let me go back for a second. So again, we had 11 different ways that we sell real estate. And we covered about eight points on how to do it in net, how to network probate real estate. We said that real estate is uh, one way is real estate investment clubs. Great one. LA Real Estate Investment Club is great. Prosperity through real estate, great group. I meet them every Wednesday at noon. That's the old Sizzler group. And they have like Tuesday night events. Fantastic. Prosperity through real estate. I should put, you know, I should put on here the names of the groups I go to. That's a good point. I'm going to write that down one second. List uh, REI groups, list other probate networking, bar, fiduciary. Okay, made notes myself there. Real estate investment groups. Number two, business marketing, BNI, LATIP. But, but all those are great sources for probate business. You might say, well, yeah, there's no attorneys there. There's no petitioners there. No, no, no. There's people there who know people who have problems with real estate. That's what we're looking for. Focus in on your area of expertise. Um, come from giving. Have a value piece to drive lead generation. Bill, your sound just went out. Can't hear you. Your sound just went out. We see your... Bill, we can't, can't hear you, Bill.
No. Hey, Bill. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you now. Okay. Where did I leave off? I'm not sure where you guys left me. Probably point number three or four. Where, where, where am I? <laughs> no. Wow. Okay. Well, that that's not so fun. Okay. Well, anyhow, I was just going to share with you a couple of events. Uh, the, um, I was going to show you the um, Grant Cardone Real Estate Challenge. If you're a real estate agent, there's a free Grant Cardone Real Estate Challenge. It's May um, uh, 10th through 13th. If you're interested, text me, email me, but definitely get involved if you're an agent. Um, and then I also want to share, I'm traveling to New York in June and I'm traveling to Florida in uh, July. I'll be in um, uh, New York City and uh, the island, June 14th through 18th. And I'll be in South Florida, Aventura, Miami, Boca Raton area, July 23rd through 28th. And I'll be doing some lecture learns there and meeting people there. Okay, so that's my presentation. Uh, I covered a lot and talked quickly. Questions, comments, issues. Joanne, so much for modern technology. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, and um, I, I must have done something. It just went out halfway through the process. I don't know what that was. It's a brand new microphone I bought too. And it's second time it's cocked out on me. So who has a question or comment or raise their hand or issue or something that we can help with today? Anybody? Yeah, hey, Bill. Um, are there in-person meetings or are these meetings all done online? Um, okay, now, now I can't hear. I'm sorry, were you talking? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, Bill, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I was saying, are, are, these, are there any in-person meetings or are all the meetings, the meetups um, just now done online? The meetups that I host are only online. Um, for now, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, I will be going to New York in June, and I believe we'll do some live small group meetings there, but we'll see. That's June. And then July, I'm going to Florida, which is wide open. We'll do some live meetings in Florida. But here locally in Los Angeles, I don't know anybody who's holding live meetings yet that I'm aware of. I'm ready to. Okay. If you know somebody real estate related or meetup, let me know. But I don't know anybody at this time. Thank you. I have a, I have a question for you, Bill. Sure. This is Anthony. Hi, uh, so how do you, uh, how do most buyers uh, finance these uh, probate, uh, probate uh, real estate? Do they, uh, do they pay up cash up front or do they try to finance, find some financing for this? So there's different stages of probate real estate. About 90% of probate property that's sold is on the MLS. It looks like any other sale or should look like any other sale, except for the form is a little different. There's one extra document the attorney has to file and it should close. So theoretically, that could be any kind of financing from cash to FHA or VA. I'll tell you, I literally spoke to a, uh, an agent today and an attorney who are convinced that because it's probate, it couldn't be uh, uh, FHA or VA. I said, well, no, that's not true. If the property is suitable for a PGVA, then why not? It's like any other property. So it really depends on the transaction. Now, the probates that I focus on myself are court sales. At court sales, you either have to have all cash or cash and a hard money loan. You can't borrow money to buy the property. So I work with some investors and I help them get the financing set up and get that financing. Okay. Thank you. Do you ever come across any commercial commercial real estate probate sales? Yeah, actually, there's one coming up for sale in uh, May. It's a gas station in San Gabriel Valley. So I'd say there's usually one a month, usually a small retail. This is the second gas station in a few months. Um, there's an industrial property once every six months, but 95% is residential or land. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Uh, how do you find a probate property? Well, I'd say find a probate real estate agent. Um, like Nelly asked, how can I find a probate property? So find a probate real estate agent. So we have a couple on this line. I, 
I teach agents one of the 11 ways to sell property is being an expert in the probate inventory. So I recommend that real estate agents, buyers agents, do a search on all the properties in the MLS that are probate and hit and look at them when they come in the market because I think that creates some extra inventory, not a lot of extra, but a few extra pieces of inventory that you can sell that other agents aren't gonna know what to do. And if you know how to sell that property better than the listing agent and can coach them, you'll create an opportunity for your buyer that other agents won't. So to answer your question, how do you find it? There's a couple ways. One way is, uh, one of the 11 ways is, is finding properties on the MLS. And I teach that class as an hour long class. But really, um, if you're uh, they're not listed as probate. So Agnelli, any property in the MLS that is in probate is supposed to be listed as a probate. If not, it's a violation. You're really supposed to be listed as a probate for the protection of the customers. So if you find an example that's not, let me know and I'll, I'll report the violation. But my experience is generally they, they are reported as probate when they're in the MLS. Now you might say about off-market property, that's a different story. I would call those pre-probates or because they go off market, they sell it, they get the probate done. If you're not an agent, how can you find out about probate sales? Layla, I would say find a probate real estate agent for the ones that are on the MLS. I have a lot of investors that work what I call pre-probate. They'll call families who lost somebody in their family that own property in the area and they'll cold call, door knock, or mail that list to find people who want to sell property and make them an off-market offer. So that's another way that helps a little bit. Again, that's pre-probate. That's number one of the 11 ways. Hey, Bill, I have a quick question. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so you spoke to the fact that uh, as far as uh, the financing, the question that you answered for Anthony, um, all cash or cash or combination of cash and hard money loan. Um, can you kind of speak to that process a little bit as far as not acquiring the hard money loan, but um, as far as, I guess, payment uh, with the court um, and time frame around that um, and when deed is conveyed? Uh, so if you're talking about properties that are, are sold with court confirmation? Um, I'm, I'm thinking specifically about properties that are sold at probate hearings. So ones that right. you bid on. Right. That, you can, that you could overbid on or not. Right. And I, I will say that that's the most specialized piece of business that I'm aware of. And I don't do business in Las Vegas yet. I'm looking for a team member to help me kind of build out my business there to do more. I have leads there. I have never been to their court. I'm waiting for them to open up. Um, I can tell you in California, when you've been in those properties, you have to be ready to close in about 10 days. So that kind of precludes conventional financing, FHA, VA. And then technically, it's supposed to be cash, which means technically the escrow doesn't prepare a deed of trust. They're supposed to come in with all cash. That said, there are escrows that will prepare a deed. There's sellers that will allow that to happen and you can finance it that way. So I would say it depends on the deal, depends on the listing agent, depends on the property and your area of expertise. I've gotten deals financed in escrow. They were ready to close the hard money loan, but we had enough time to get conventional financing. But it can be a little tricky and you have to know the players and you have to know how to, have to stall them because if they think they can close the deal and you're holding them up, they're not going to cooperate with you. But if you can kind of force them to drag things out a little bit, then you have a little more time. So, so I think it's a longer question. If you have a particular property, uh, send to me, let's talk about it. I'd be glad to try to walk you through and help you research it. How's that sound? Yeah, that would be great. Um, I, I've been filtering through the list of properties and going you know, to the probate hearings for some weeks now. And so I just want to wrap my head around um, the payment. I mean, I think even if whoever the investors are that you're working with here, if you wouldn't mind like maybe the three or four of us in a group chat getting together just so maybe I could find out about, because I've, I've already spoken with the hard money lender and been approved for all of that. But of course, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm understanding what's going to take place after I win the bid um, and 
move forward with the property because some of them are under contract with the MLS. So it's like, and I've heard that you have to assume those contract terms and that does include timing. So, so I'll give you, I'll give, again, I can't speak to Nevada, but I can speak as an expert in Los Angeles. So people say a lot of things like that, but they don't know what they're talking about. I had the experience last week of my investor bought a property and there were conditions in the sale approval that we didn't like. Their escrow, their title, their this, their that, a bunch of stuff. The, neither the attorney nor the listing agent made the terms of the sale conditioned on the sale in court. Meaning the original buyer agreed to those terms and they could have attached that to the um, order in the court. They could have, when they started the bidding said, oh, and here's the terms and given everybody who was bidding a copy to agree to or not, they didn't do that. Hmm. So after we won the sale, and the attorney didn't even come to court because they thought with COVID, they don't have to. And I said, well, I'll wait for you. So she drove to court and met with me. And she started to give me the classic, I'm the attorney. You're going to do everything we tell you to do. And I said, hold on. You know, and I, I, as respectfully as I could say it, I said to her, respectfully, I'm not an attorney. I respect that you are and I'm not. I don't know the law as well as you do, but I know the procedures here. And here's what I know. You could have chosen to make those terms condition of the sale, you did it. Therefore, the rest is all negotiable. We all have to come and come an agreement on this. And here's what we're not gonna agree to. And here, and I, and I also kind of showed her why some things she wanted to didn't work for them. And so that's where the difference between what people tell me and actually know, I have the actual probate code book. It's in, in my briefcase in the other room. I, used, I had it right here all week. I was looking at something and I would show it to you. I had the actual probate code book. So when I quote, when somebody asks me a question, I know what the probate code says. And that's the difference, I think, that's the standard you wanna to work towards is learning the code, learning the real rules. So that rather than you depending on somebody having told you, I'll give you another example. I missed this. In LA, in California, let's imagine a property comes to sell for confirmation to 500. $500,000. And the overbid is 5% plus $500 over that, or $525,500. So one rule I know is that all the commission, all 5% of the overbid goes to the winning buyer's agent. So rather than splitting all the commission 50-50, according to the probate code, all of the 5% extra goes to the buyer's agent. Now I've had agents say to me, well, the MLS says blah, blah, blah. Aha, MLS rules say, except for when in violation of probate code. Here's the probate code, right? Sure. There's, there's another one that says that, um, well, anyhow, that, that's my point. My point is I know the code and I would urge you to do the same. Sure. Now I don't, I, I don't get down on you because you don't know it. I'm gonna challenge you to raise your game and learn the answer yourself rather than what somebody told you. Okay, in your experience in LA, uh, do you guys have any opportunities for, redemp for redemption after um, someone's overbid successfully on a property? There's no redemption in probate process. Redemption is only in sheriff sales. So in California, we have two types of foreclosures. 99.9% .9 are administrative foreclosures, deeds of trust that are uh, foreclosed on uh, most commonly at county court steps are sold in Norwalk or Pomona. And then occasionally, usually with a lawsuit, this is called a judicial foreclosure. And that's where a court orders a property sold to pay debts owed to somebody. Very rare. Those have redemption. But in California, most foreclosures don't have redemption period. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Good questions. Come back again. This is a Shula, right? Yeah. Shola. We met on... We met on the pro, uh, Prosperity Through Real Estate, I think? It was the REIA yeah. for data for Las Vegas. How's that meeting for you? Is it productive? Uh, yeah, I connected with an investor there that um, has been helping me out with some tax delinquencies and um, you know some deals I've been able to shoot his way for uh, some, other, some other things. Yeah, I'm always moving. I'm always, <laughs> always real estating. Good, but I met you there. I think it's a good meeting. I was just trying to promote that to other people. It's a good place to meet people 
Yeah. Um, is a, good. Thank you. I'm going to ask a question. You know, Nelly, I see a couple of texts here in your last one was they're not listed as probate. So I think I answered that question that uh, in the MLS, you're obligated to list as probate if it's a probate. If it's not listed that way, it's a violation. I don't see that very often. I imagine it happens, but I, I can't say I see that very often. Um, it might be either don't know it's a probate and they discover it in process. That happens. Um, LM Personal. Why are probate so attractive to you? And if you share the benefits versus traditional property sale. So I would say to you that the area of probate real estate appeals to me because I feel that there's a, lot, a number of reasons why it works for me. I feel like I kind of look like an attorney. I'm older, I've got gray hair. My father was an attorney. I used to clerk for attorneys. So many of my clients were attorneys. When I evaluated my business, it was a natural fit for me. Um, I like complicated problems. Um, I don't know anything about fixing property. I don't know about kinds of tile and flooring and paint. I just really, it doesn't really interest me at all. I, I have a toolbox in case somebody comes to my house to fix something. They have some tools they can pick through. I, I haven't even put a nail in a wall in the last 25 years of my life. But I learned the law. I learned the, the guidelines. I learned the forms of probate. I find it interesting. So I would say that, that you got to find an area of business that plays to your strengths. Now, probate real estate can work for somebody, let's say, who's a contractor, because almost all the properties are fix and flips. But your strategy would be different than mine. I, I'm looking to work with contractors. I don't want to touch the property. Nothing makes me happier than getting a check for property sold that I never went to. I just don't, I'm just not interested. That's me. Hope that answers your question. Yeah. Do you offer anything free CMA to attorneys to get you for the door? Yes. So, Ori, good question. Literally today, I sent de uh, deeds. I tell attorneys that if you're researching property, it's common they need the vesting or the backup documents uh, for uh, their clients. And so, I want to train them to ask me for the deeds. My assistant gets the inquiry and sends them back the deed. I do that all the time. CMA, yes. Broker price opinion, yes. I'll tell you though, I don't do it for free. Some things, I, I've been hired as an expert attorney in LA County Court a couple of times. Imagine other attorneys seeing me as an expert attorney on the witness stand, uh, the value of, of, of promoting myself that way. So I would say, yeah, I, I, I am in the service business and I do, I do wanna help them, um, offer them information, services, 100%, right? Sorry, where are you located? Orange County, Mission Viejo. Oh, very nice. So yeah, I would say that um, definitely everybody I do business with, I try to be of service on this, on this call. I'm trying to help you guys learn how to sell more property, right? I, I try to come from being of service and being a benefit of other people. My, my first coach was Zig Ziglar. Oh. Um, and Zig Ziglar, one of the things he's known for and I heard the founder of VXP quote him on this, but this is my favorite quote. You can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. So true. Thank you. Problem solver. I try to be, you know, uh, at least I get in the middle of it and try. Okay, so uh, let's see, Rick Brand. I'm not sure what that is or link. Thank you for sharing. Marcy Green, Green Financial. Thank you for, for being here. Um, it, okay, so there we are. It's uh, 441. So time to kind of bring things to a close. Uh, today, again, we covered number 11. 11 is to make a sale in real estate, which was networking. Next week, I'll briefly run through all 11 again. And the week after that, we'll start again. We'll do one at a time uh, to work through. But again, I think each of these really are worth going into detail. If you pick one as your marketing area, you could really go very deep on any one of these for hours. I have a very deep outline on all these. I don't do them all. I plan to implement more and more in the future. But like anything, it's about the details and the execution. It's not just the one idea. It's the details and the consistent execution that's gonna make, make you money in the long run. Um, Shola, thank you for sharing. So can we connect? Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I'd love to. You're, you're Nick Spear. So yeah, uh, I'm in Workplace. You have all my contact info. Anybody can call me anytime. You know, it's funny. It's funny how many real estate companies hide the realtor's phone number or email. I don't get that. You know, I get a, 
a buyer's agent sends me an offer and I don't see their email and I go to the website. I can't find their email. I'm thinking, well, how about buyers and sellers? They, they can't find their email. Uh, what, you know, how does that work? But any of you are welcome to call me, text me, or email me. My phone number, Bill Gross, 310-210-0008, 310-210-0008. If you want to email me, uh, you can email me at bill at the LA probate expert.com. Uh, we do this call every Thursday at four o'clock PM Pacific time, uh, which is probateweekly.com. Every Tuesday, I do a real estate investment focus group called real estate investing zoom.com. And if you want to get more information on what I do and how I do it, you can text the words, just the words, good stuff. Don't put thank you, Bill, and good stuff. Just put good stuff. I appreciate the rest. But the computer is it's a computer program to 213-460-2577. You'll get back a, a list with my the 11 ways to sell real estate, uh, data sources, a discount coupon code, a way to get a free book, and a list of my other meetings. Any, not seeing any, any last questions, raised hands, problems, challenges, issues? No? Not seeing any? Look, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for making this event successful. It's been growing. We've got 31 people alive today which is phenomenal. I appreciate you guys. Feel free to watch it on YouTube. And if you are watching YouTube, subscribe. Either like it or dislike it as appropriate. Put comments in. How can I make it better? What would you like to see on this call? What questions you have for me? And I check every single comment and we'll bring it back to the call next time. So thank you all. Have a great week, everybody.